Hey there, Louis Ecobellis here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to create a UI action in ServiceNow. Now, before we get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest ServiceNow tutorials. Now, let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now before we get started, I will explain what a UI action is. Now, UI actions in ServiceNow allow you to add elements such as buttons and links or menu items to forms and lists in ServiceNow. Now, in this example, I have a custom app that I built here, and you can see here I've added a UI action, which is a button that says approved, and that is specifically what I'm going to show you how to implement in service now in this tutorial. I'm specifically going to show you how to create a UI action that is a button and then when you click that button it will update the status of a record. Now UI actions can be used to execute both client-side and server-side script. Without being overly technical, client-side script execute JavaScript on the client which is the web browser when some event occurs such as when a form loads or when a field changes values or when an element such as a button is clicked. Server-side scripts execute JavaScript on the server and they're configured to run when a record is either displayed, inserted, updated, deleted, or when a table is queried. Now, in this tutorial, we're specifically going to look at how to add a UI action in the context of a scoped app. And again, a scoped app represents a container for a specific application that you're building in ServiceNow and the scoped app contains all of the different components such as your data tables, forms, views, and workflows. And again, in this example, I am using this basic scoped application that I built to facilitate the submission of invoices for review and approval. Um, and we're going to again add that approval UI action to the top of this form as a button. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to navigate to the studio in ServiceNow. This is where you can come to actually access your scoped applications. And again, I've already built my scoped application for my invoice approval workflow. Next, I'm going to click on create application file and in the filter, I'm going to type UI action and I'm going to go ahead and click on UI action. This is going to bring up the UI action new record form. Now, the first thing you want to do is give it a name. Now, what you enter in the name field is what will actually be displayed on that particular UI action. So if it's a button that we're creating, what we put here in the name field is actually going to show up on the button when we go to look at the forms that we'll be interacting with. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and type approved because that's what I want this button to display. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to need to select the table that you want this UI action to operate on. And in this case, I am going to go ahead and click into my table field here. And I am going to search for the table that will store my invoice record. And again, that is because what this UI action is going to do is it's going to take the current record and it's going to update the status to approve when somebody actually clicks it. Now, the next thing that you want to do is you want to define the order. Now, the way the order works is that in order to change the position of the button that we will be adding, if you want to move it um, from left to right, you want to increment this value in 100. So for example, if I want this button to appear on the far right, I am going to first look at my form and determine how many buttons I have on it and then I'm going to increment this value up in hundreds again to move it to the right. So if I wanted to, this button to be the last button that's displayed, I might put in a higher value like 500. And if I want this button to be displayed uh, left or first from left to right, I could actually go and put a negative number. So in this case, I want this to be the first button that's displayed on my form and I'm gonna go ahead and put in negative 100. Now the next thing you want to do is give your UI action a name. Now this action name field, what this does is whatever you enter in here is how you would actually incorporate this UI action in scripts that you might create in other places in ServiceNow. So if I wanted to actually 
call or reference this UI action after I build it. What I would do when I'm incorporating it in scripts is I would actually make a reference to approve underscore name or approve underscore invoice, which is more reflective of this UI action. Next, you have a series of options here. And the first one is active. So this is going to indicate whether this UI action should actually be displayed when people are interacting with uh, the forms or records in this scoped application. So I'm gonna leave this checked. The show insert option, essentially what this means is should this UI action be visible when you are creating a new record but you actually haven't saved it? In this case, I'm going to turn this off because that doesn't necessarily make sense for my use case. The button we're implementing here is to update the status to approved. And so when somebody's creating a new record, uh, it shouldn't go from new to approved right away. So I'm going to uncheck this. And the next option here, show update. This is whether or not this UI action should be visible when somebody is actually updating a record. So again, in our use case, this is applicable. I'll leave this checked. And the next option here, client, essentially what this represents is whether or not this UI action should execute a client side script or server side script. So we want this UI action to actually respond to an on click event. That is when somebody actually goes ahead and clicks on this button, we want the client side script to execute. So we want the browser to execute the script that will define lower in this field. So again, we're gonna go ahead and check this. Now the remaining options, uh, list v2 compatible and list v3 compatible. You want to check these if you're implementing UI actions that will operate on lists in ServiceNow and there's two different versions. We're just going to leave that as they are because we're not working with list here. Again, we're trying to add a button that will actually update uh, a record status to approved on a form. Um, overrides, if we were actually trying to override another UI action, we would go ahead and search for it. And again, we're not doing that here, so we're just going to leave this. The comments field, this is where you can actually put in a description of what this UI action does. So in this case, I will just put in approves the current invoice record. A hint is almost like a tool tip. So what you put in here will be visible on the actual UI action element when the user hovers over it. So in this case, I will just put will approve invoice. And in the on click field, this is where we're actually going to put a reference to the specific function that we are going to describe here in the script section in a minute. And again, what this is going to do is this is going to say whenever a user actually clicks on this particular button, ServiceNow should actually execute the client side function that we are going to include in our script section here. And the last field condition, this defines the conditions that restrict when a UI action appears. So for example, if you wanted your UI action or your form button to only show up when a record was in a specific state, you would define that condition here. Now, before we look at the script, we'll quickly look at the remaining settings. So on the right side here, you can determine what kind of UI action you want to implement. In our case, we want a form button. Uh, and if you wanted a context menu or a link, you could go ahead and select those. And you'll notice that you also have the option to implement UI actions in multiple forms. So I could make this a button and a link or a context menu item as well. The form style, uh, these are sort of predefined styles or colors, if you will, that you can assign to these different UI actions. So I believe destructive will make the button green uh, and primary will just default to the standard sort of grayscale buttons that appear in service now. And then again, these options here, if you are creating UI actions that are specific to list, you could go ahead and select these options and again, select your style here. Uh, but because we're working with buttons, we're just going to leave these options uh, null as they appear here. Now, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and define the script that is going to run whenever somebody actually invokes or interacts with this specific button that we're adding. Now, I've already taken my script and prepared it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it here. And specifically, uh, really what I'm going to do is just sort of highlight 
um, the specific client side script that will get executed. So you can see here, I've defined a function called run client code. Okay, and essentially what this is going to do is it's going to take the current form and it's going to set the value. Now, my status field for the records in this specific app is called invoice underscore status and the desired state approved, which is what I want to happen when somebody actually clicks that button is three. So I've put set the invoice status field to three whenever somebody actually goes ahead and clicks on that UI action that we're implementing. Now, what I need to do here is I need to actually select the function that I've defined in my script. And I now need to come back up to my on click field and I need to actually go ahead and paste that function here. So again, when somebody actually goes and clicks on that particular UI action, ServiceNow is going to invoke or execute the run client code function as defined in my script field here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click submit. Okay, and you can see here that my UI action has been saved and you'll also notice in the studio tree here under server development UI actions, you can see here uh, the approved UI action that we just created. Now what I'll do is I'll actually leave the studio and I will come into ServiceNow and I'll open my invoice approval workflow app. You can see here I currently only have one record and I will go ahead and click into this record. And you can see here at the top of the form, the approved UI action that we just implemented. You'll notice as I hover over this UI action, the hint that we implemented that reads will approve invoice displays. And now when I go ahead and actually click on this UI action, you're going to notice that the status updated from pending approval to invoice is approved. And I've also incorporated uh, a message here just to confirm that we approve this invoice. And again, just to demonstrate that, I will change the status back to pending approval and I will click update and I will come back into my record. And again, when I click on this approved button, you're going to see that the status changed to approved. Now, one more thing that I will demonstrate. So you'll recall that we said we only want this UI action to show on update and not on insert. So if I go ahead and click on the new button, we would expect that that UI action is not displayed. And you can see here it isn't displayed. So I'll just go ahead and fill this out very quickly. And I'll click submit. And now I'll click into my new record. And again, you can see here that approved UI action is displayed. And when we click it, we would expect this pending approval to update. And you can see here that the status updated. So that's it. This was just a quick tutorial showing you how to implement a UI action in a scoped app in ServiceNow. And more specifically, we looked at how to add a button to a form that can be used to update the status of a record in a scoped app. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on the latest ServiceNow tutorials. I'm Louis Acabellas. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.